Okay, we are ready to move on to the adrenal glands, and these are actually our last organ, really two organs, um, for the endocrine system. And then we just cover some general stuff that applies to all endocrine organs, or most endocrine organs. So, um, adrenal glands, um, <clears throat> adrenal, as in next to the kidney, um, here they are right here. They're actually sitting on top of your kidneys. They are not that big. Um, that's like a historical anomaly that I can explain to you guys in class about why they're usually drawn much bigger than they actually are in a healthy person. But they do sit on top of your kidneys. They're not directly related to kidney function, although one of the hormones that they secrete actually does regulate something about the kidneys. Um, they're actually um, physiologically, they really function as two separate glands regulated differently. The adrenal cortex on the outside, anytime you have a cortex and a medulla, the cortex is on the outside. The adrenal medulla is on the inside. We're going to do the cortex first and then we'll do the medulla. The adrenal cortex, the outer portion, um, all of the hormones that come from the adrenal cortex are steroids. And I'm going to remind you of your steroids that we've been looking at before. So um, steroids are lipid soluble and derived from cholesterol. And so the um, adrenal steroids have a whole set of naming associated with them. So before we get into the super details about it, I want to teach you how the naming works with the um, adrenal gland hormones, They're really the adrenal cortex hormones. A lot of people call those either corticosteroids or adrenocorticoids. I call them corticosteroids. So I'm going to sort of draw something for you that allows you to understand the terminology. And really the ones that we're going to be talking about are cortisol and corticosterone, aldosterone, and DHEA and androcenodione, those. So um, let me show you how the naming works for these. Okay. All right. So what we are talking about here is um, adrenal cortex steroids. So collectively, we are going to call those corticosteroids. They are all corticosteroids if they are steroids released from the adrenal cortex. And there are three categories of corticosteroids. We're going to categorize them based on what they regulate. They can regulate salt, sugar, and sex. Okay. And the three categories of corticosteroids before you get to the individual examples of the hormones are the ones that are uh, regulate salt, sugar, and sex. I bet you could match, uh, match them if I gave you the names. So one category of corticosteroids is called the gonadocorticoids. And I would bet that you can guess that those regulate sex gonadocorticoids. Okay, one of them is called the glucocorticoids, and I would bet that you can figure out that those regulate sugar. And um, the last group is the ones that regulate salt, and those are called the mineral corticoids. Okay, and with each of these, you are going to have one or more examples of the hormones. Here you've got one, here you've got two, and here you've got two. So what we will do is as we go learn these hormones, we'll add them back into where they go. But it's important that you know that all of these hormones are going to be steroids. That's their chemical class but they are all also going to be considered corticosteroids. That would be in like an alternate name or something. And some of them will be glucocorticoids, some of them will be gonado. And I'll reinforce this as we actually go through. Okay, so the adrenal cortex, all hormones that come from the adrenal cortex are steroid hormones. Um, and there's three categories, salt, sugar, sex. Um, and remember, steroid does not mean sex. Steroid means lipid soluble derived from cholesterol. So let's do the mineral corticoids first. And really, you're only going to learn one mineral corticoid, and that's this guy right here, aldosterone, right here. Okay, so aldosterone um, 
is involved, um, the one that you guys are going to learn, is involved in controlling um, ion levels, salts. Um, and really what it does is it targets the kidney to conserve um, sodium at the at expense of potassium. So let's see if I can do this. So let me just go ahead and write all of these in so that because it, it's going to make me make another one when I do this. So the mineral corticoid that you are going to learn is aldosterone. Okay, that's the one we're going to talk about right now. You're going to learn two glucocorticoids, which are cortisol and corticosterone. And then you're going to learn two gonadocorticoids, which are DHEA and androstenedione. Okay, so that's all filled out, which is good because I can't have two whiteboards going at one time. It won't let me. So um, let us talk about what aldosterone actually does. So because aldosterone ends up being important again when we get to uh, the urinary system and the cardiovascular system. So it's really good if you can kind of get an understanding of what it's doing right now. So what it does is aldosterone targets the kidney to retain sodium and secrete potassium. So I'm going to draw you just a simplified version of what it does. So aldosterone, it goes to primarily the kidney. That's not the only place that it goes. And at the kidney, um, just see if you can make this make sense what you are going to have, not drawn anatomically, just physiologically. What you are going to have is the opportunity for exchange between the blood and the urine. And what aldosterone does is It causes you to retain sodium and dump potassium, okay? So it retains sodium and dumps potassium, and I just want you to think about whether that would have any impact on your blood pressure if you retained sodium and dumped potassium. It would cause your blood pressure to increase. So. What is the feedback mechanism for aldosterone secretion? Now, there's several different ways to control aldosterone secretion. I'm just going to show you one. It is an example of humoral feedback. Here's a figure from your textbook. This is one of the reasons you could release aldosterone and one of the ways you could respond to it. So, for instance, let's say your blood potassium was way too high. I don't know. You ate 10 bananas or something. I have no idea what you did then what will happen is the adrenal cortex would increase aldosterone secretion. And the kidneys would increase potassium excretion, secretion, and then by the time you pee it out, it's excreted. Um, and then what would that would do is lower the blood potassium level. But the feedback mechanism is important to look at here because this is not the hormone feeding back to stop its own secretion. It is the potassium level feeding back to stop its own secretion. There's also, I'm not going to hold you responsible for it right now, but there's also an aldosterone release mechanism that has to do with sodium concentration. But either way, it is always the ion and not nervous system or endocrine system controlling that. So that is our mineral corticoid, okay? Um, our glucocorticoids, the ones that regulate sugar, are the super duper complicated ones, okay? And I'm going to try to introduce you to them. You probably won't get them the first time you go through. It's okay. Most people don't get endocrine system the first time they go through, which is part of the reason it's really good to chunk it up into little chunks. Okay, so I'm going to stop here and then I'll do glucocorticoids in the next one.